Hello, hello, Crafty Chicks. This is Grace here at the Comfy Nest with Grace, and I'm gonna walk you through how this fantastic mixed media hearts project came together. Um, started out, gotta create your background, right? So I'm working in a mixed media book, nine by 12 book, and I needed to pick out some scrap paper. And I use scraps of decorative paper that I've had um, used before and you can see they're all just different shapes and sizes but I'm going for a general color scheme that's pretty bright I've got some pinks and greens chosen here I'm sticking with that color scheme of those two and then I'm using my paper cutter to just cut down these wonky triangular shapes to more squared off shapes so that I have rectangles and squares to use on the background um, I don't know, I just decided I wanted rectangles and squares. Most of the time I just tear them in any shape or size, doesn't really matter to me, but this time I decided to go with rectangles and squares. So they're not all perfectly rectangle or square, but um, I've got them down to a more cohesive shape than what they were before. So here I have my mixed media pad and I'm using Mod Podge to decoupage all of this paper down onto the background and you'll see it comes together. It's really vibrant and really bright. Um, so it takes me a few minutes to do that and I did speed up the video you guys just so that it wouldn't take as long to watch how it comes together which is actually a benefit of doing pre-recorded videos. So I hope that that's something that you're enjoying. So if you're new to the page, to the Comfy Nest with Grace, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thanks for tuning in. I would love to have you comment and let me know that you're here and that you're new, where you're coming in from. For those of you who are loyal fans of the Comfy Nest with Grace, thanks for coming over to YouTube. Um, I recently had my Facebook page, which is where I normally communicate with and connect with my followers. It recently got hacked and so I have no control right now over on Facebook of my business pages or groups or my personal page like all of it even Instagram I have no access to any of that stuff right now so that gives me the opportunity to share some content especially new content over content over here on uh, YouTube so I'm happy to be able to do that I'm happy to connect with um, my regular folks, my regular crafty chicks who are have been tuning in for years <laughs> of my, my years of my being on Facebook, and now to connect with um, maybe some new folks over here on YouTube. So it's it's actually become a bit of a blessing and forcing me to expand where I reach out to folks. Um, so I think that's really a good thing. All right, yeah, that little section right there, that orange piece was really funky. It had a, a punch, um, um, three triangular shapes punched out of it. Um, and I just put it on there anyway. Um, it actually works out to be a really cool part in the background where you see the white um, mixed media paper coming through on that orange scrap. It actually worked out to be pretty cool. Um, I'm just using up scraps, you guys. I, I don't know, are you a person who holds on to your scraps of decorative paper um, I'd love to know if where you are with this do you hold on to them and keep them or do you toss them out when you have mis misshaped pieces left over I'm a huge frugal fanny like I want to reuse everything use up everything that I have and so that purple folder that you saw me have you know I had at the beginning of the video I've had that purple folder for at least 10 years and I put all my scraps of decorative paper in there and then I use them sometimes for backgrounds. Um, I just find it to be a really great way to use up what I already have. So let me know in the comments where you are with that. I would be so curious to hear from you. Do you keep your scraps or do you toss them away? There's no right or wrong, no right or wrong to how to do it. I'm just curious to see how many um, sit on each side of that, um, each side of that fence. Which one are you? Okay, we're almost done here. One more little corner to cover up. I used glossy Mod Podge just because that's what I had on hand. Um, and I'm just making sure that I get all my little corners stuck down there. Um, putting that Mod Podge away for now. Gotta dry that, make sure it's nice and dry before we move on to the next part. I just use a hairdryer. 
I don't have a heating tool, although I've got it in my mind to get one soon. <laughs> I don't have one yet, uh, so I just use my hair dryer. Okay, once it's dried and we're ready for the next step, I grabbed some transparent or clear gesso and I wanted to get a nice thin but even coat of gesso all over this background because I want to now be able to use paints and markers and pens on this background surface. Um, and in order to prime it and make sure that the surface is ready to accept all those different types of mediums, um, it's really a good idea to come in with some transparent gesso and just cover that up. So that's what I did there. And I think I had, you know, the, the paper in the background, some of it is cardstock, some of it's regular paper. And so there's a little bit of a lip where the cardstock is and the transparent gesso um, just kind of pulled up in those places. And so I was using that shop, that blue shop rag to just um, grab up some of that extra gesso. Okay, now I'm gonna paint over this. It, it seems counterintuitive, but it all works out in the end, I promise. Um, I love layering different um, things. This is mixed media where you're taking papers and you're taking paints and markers and pens and all kinds of things, stencils and stamps, and you're layering them to create the look that you want. So I go into the project and I have a, a pretty good idea of what I'm wanting to do, um, but in a way, part of the fun of it is the discovery and deciding as you go. Um, you can always change your mind or make decisions based on how the colors are coming together and the papers and all the things. So all I'm doing here is I have some white paint and some green paint and I'm using a brayer to apply it over the background decoupaged paper. So the decoupage paper, it has, some of it has patterns, um, some of it's pink, some of it's green. I'm taking this green and white paint and just washing it over or rolling it over all of that background to uh, wash it out a little bit and make it look more cohesive. So I start with white and green and it's a small brayer that I'm using to apply it. And then I decided, I think I want some more yellow on here. So this is the part of deciding as you go. Um, I decided to add some yellow and I was so happy that I, I chose to do this. I don't usually use yellow when I create. It's just not a color I grab very often. Um, but I was so happy once I did because I think it added just some brightness to it and it actually pulled some of the colors that were in the papers below to make it look really cohesive. And it really is fun working with a brayer, you guys. Okay, now I'm grabbing some Peony Pink by Dixie Belle. It's just a really deep, beautiful pink, and I decided to add a little bit of that to this background and um, put a little bit of it on a palette knife, and I started to scrape it onto the background well, I started, I think, trying to like just get drips of it on the background with a palette knife and then scraped it a little bit. And I just, I was not getting the look I wanted. I had some pink, but probably felt like it wasn't enough. So I grabbed a fan brush. I wet down that paint a whole heck of a lot. And then I started just splashing it onto the background, some of that hot pink. cleaning up my mess because I splashed it all over my table as well. Okay, now I wanted to add some more visual interest. So I grabbed some of my um, small little patterned stencils from Tim Holtz. I have them on a ring um, and I grabbed one of the patterns that I liked and I wanted to use that hot pink paint to just add some more um, dimension here. So I mixed a bit of the hot pink with some of the white to create a light pink. And when I first put it on there, I, I had already um, watered down that paint. So it came on really um, washed, like it was really mix matched and washed through the stencil that first round. So I decided to 
go with the dark pink um, paint. So I, I dried off my stencil because it had a lot of watery paint on it. So I dried it off, then went straight to the jar and used the paint straight from the jar. Um, it was thicker. It was the consistency I needed it for stenciling. Um, when I was using the paint that I used for the splashes, it was just too thin. So I just changed my mind and went to the, the thicker paint from the jar. And that worked out great. I mean, it was really deep, dark pink, and it was showing up really well. And the stencil design came out really well um, because it wasn't washed down at all. I'm just cleaning up my stencil a little bit, getting that hot pink off of there so that I could put it away. Okay, so what I really wanted to do on the top of this, the focal point for this project is gonna be hearts. Um, by now, Valentine's has come and gone, but when I recorded this, Valentine's Day was still coming up, and I love working with hearts anyway. I just think there's such a beautiful, fun design element, regardless of whether or not Valentine's Day is coming. I feel like it's something you can work with all year round. Um, so I wanted three hearts, and I wanted them to be green, so I chose three different green patterned papers from my scraps, cut them out into little paper hearts. I think they were all cardstock. Placed them down where I think I wanted them on the project. I just used a glue, a glue stick, like a basic school, Elmer's school glue stick to get them down on there. Um, and you'll see in a minute that didn't, it, it, it stuck it on for the most part, but a couple of the edges of the hearts were, um, didn't stick down all the way. So I, I ended up reinforcing that with some more glue, but for now they stuck down just fine for me to continue with the project. Okay, time to get all these scraps out of the way. I, I really, I work on a messy table, but I don't love it. <laughs> so it's time to move those away. Okay, now you can see that those three green hearts, if you look real hard, you can see them, but they need to be anchored down on the project. And so I love using a gel pen, and that's exactly what I'm using, a black ink gel pen here to outline the hearts. And I put the first outline on, and I tried to do kind of like, um, it's, a, it's, it's a ballpoint pen that I'm using. And so I tried to put a double thick layer of ink around the hearts because um, I really n needed it to be dark so that those hearts show up and they, they really are anchored on the page. So you'll see me, I go back a couple times around and, and really try to darken up that line so that you can see the hearts well. Okay, so here I have a couple of empty ribbon spools. Um, I go through, I sell a ribbon bundle on my website, thecomfynestwithgrace.com, and it's um, a ribbon bundle. It's 15 yards of ribbon, and I go through a lot of ribbon, fulfilling those orders. Um, the people who order mystery grab bags from my website also get 15 yards of ribbon, a variety of ribbons. Um, and so I have go through a lot of spools. And so I saved a couple of them because I was thinking they make a great circle stencil, right? Um, so I took the ends off of three of those spools of ribbon. They're three different sizes and they cover up my three different sized hearts. And I used it kind of like a mask to cover up my heart. And then I used um, Delusions ink spray in white to spray all over the whole thing. Um, it is a really fast way to add any color. I had the white one, but to add any color to your project. Um, it's messy though, but it worked really well. Um, now you can see that the place where the spools of ribbon 
the, the, the ends of the spools where that where they were the background on that still stayed really vibrant and bright and it's it looks great you can see those three hearts really well right now because i inked out the rest of it with white ink um so it did exactly what i wanted it to which was to showcase the background a little bit all the vibrant colors from the background and really anchor the three hearts so now i have a whitewash on the outside edges and then the hearts really become the showcase that's where i needed to reinforce the glue and i think i just used some e6000 to reinforce those paper hearts onto the board because they were that one was coming up there okay now i took a stabilo pencil a stabilo pencil is a charcoal pencil and it is water reactive so much like a watercolor pencil um except this is charcoal. So I used it to outline where the spools were, the circles created by the spools. Now I could have, and maybe I should have, put the spool back down, the cardboard cut out from the spool, back down and traced it, um, but I didn't. I just eyeballed it and created my circles. This one actually ends up a little bit of an oval, but it's okay, it did, did what I want it to do which was to showcase where the circle was and to really show the vibrant background that was inside the circle. So the more charcoal you put down from this Stabilo pencil, the darker your lines will be. So you use the pencil and you draw your lines or you color in whatever you're using, whatever you want to fill or color or draw. And then I come in with a watercolor pen um, or you can use, there's a paintbrush with some water. Um, I, I, it's just not as efficient as far as I'm concerned. So I grabbed my actual watercolor pen that has water in the barrel of the pen. And as you squeeze it, the water comes out the tip of the, the pen, or you could call it a brush. Um, and then I'm using that water to activate the charcoal. And what it does is it, it smears it. It makes it move and it makes, um, you can make a smoky effect, a smeared smoky effect look to that pencil mark. And it darkens the color of that black because it, it makes it seep into the paper below. So you can see, I just go around on all of the pencil markings from that charcoal pencil and I'm wetting it and I'm darkening it so that you can see how much it makes a difference in making that those circles really pop on that page. Okay, next up, I grabbed my gel pen. This is my black um, gel pen. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to partition off or show the lines of my original pieces of scrap decorative paper that I put down that I Mod Podged onto the background. I wanted to outline all of them. They are overlapping each other and they are um, not all exactly square or rectangle but what i did was i took that pen and i outlined all of that paper underneath from the background and the reason i did that is i wanted it to look kind of like a quilt um like quilt blocks um i wanted them to show up better i wanted them to for the presence of them to be known um so i used the pen to do that you can see just where my hand is now those three triangular shapes that were um, part of the piece of paper that had the cutouts, I, I even outlined those because I wanted them all to show up. I think it makes it really visually interesting to see all of them. OK, 
came back with my watercolor brush or pen to deepen those lines from the Stabilo pencil. And what I do here is I grab some white apple barrel paint, just snow white paint and a small brush. And I used the white paint on the outside lines of the hearts, only on the left side. It's kind of like um, some bright light coming in on that side from these hearts and um, from these circles. So I just use my white paint to color in the left side, the left outside of these circles. Okay, this is really fun. I've had this decorative adhesive mesh for a really long time. It's like a really pretty sky blue color. Um, so I took little rectangles of this mesh that's adhesive and I stuck it down on the background pieces, um, the rectangles that I of scrap paper that I used to create the background. I just cut this mesh into little rectangles and then I stuck it here or there on the background just again to add some texture, add some dimension, visual interest.
And I knew, I knew that I wanted to add some words somewhere on here, some kind of phrase, and I had grabbed some of the Tim Holtz um, little chipboard phrases, and I was testing it out there to see if it would fit there, if it would show up well. Um, so even though I didn't glue it down yet, I just, I put it on the page just so I could see if that's exactly where I was going to end up putting it. And I finished up with this mesh, the blue mesh, by putting it down. Um, I was feeling like my black, the black ink that I put down around the rectangles, like it really wasn't showing up well enough. So I went back in with my gel pen and I reinforced all of that. And actually it ended up that the gel pen, it just wasn't dark enough. So I grabbed a, um, a Micron fine tip marker uh, because it lets out more ink and it's darker. I grabbed a different um, pen marker to use to reinforce all of those lines on the background for those rectangles. So this right now I'm using a black Micron marker. Okay, so now I decided I wanted to do some stamping, so I grabbed a small stamp, and it, it actually looks like bubble wrap. Um, you could use bubble wrap in place of this stamp that I'm using now. So I grabbed a small stamp with some dots on it, um, and my black jet, it's ink. I think that, that the color is inkjet. I think that's the name of it, but it's just a really stark black. And I grabbed those to add some 
stamping around the project and it's really dark the the black is just this really dark black so it mimics the charcoal around the circles and i don't know if you can see but i i don't even like to use the whole stamp i'm just inking part of the stamp so that i don't I don't want the edges of the stamp, the squared off edges to show. I just want a few circles here and there. So I'm using the center part of the stamp and focusing on the center so that I don't have squared off edges. And I'm just using a small portion of it. Um, that's why I love these little stamps. They're so easy to work with. They're so easy to store. They're so easy to manage when you're working with them and you can get into small spaces with them. Okay, it's time to get that wording or that phrase on there. I just used my hot glue gun with that chipboard phrase from Tim Holtz um, to get that on there. Here's another marker, you guys. I still wanted these, um, these edges to look a little darker, so I grabbed just a, a black art marker and used it to outline the top line where my background is. Still looking for that really um, high contrast that I'm such a fan of. Now on my hearts, I added some little X's. I don't know why, I just was doodling and I added some X's to the edges of the hearts. I hope you've enjoyed watching this come together and these photos of the close-ups where you can see some of the details. Um, thanks for tuning in over here at The Comfy Nest with Grace. Please hit the subscribe button and the bell to make sure you change your notifications to watch for new creative demonstrations here at The Comfy Nest with Grace. Have a great day.